Being rich and famous can make some people do some crazy things, but few have managed to create as many headlines as Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor is once again making headlines for all the wrong reasons. Conor McGregor arrested. New details tonight on the arrest of UFC star Conor McGregor. This is a list of civil, criminal, and just straight up savage incidents caused by none other than the notorious one, Conor McGregor. In April of 2018, McGregor found himself in hot water after an incident at the Barclays Center just before UFC 223. Habib Nurmagomedov, along with various other fighters on the card, were arriving to the arena on a bus when Conor and his entourage stormed the parking garage. McGregor, after snorting too many lines of Red Bull, launched a full-scale assault on the bus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Connor was angry over an earlier incident involving Habib and one of his teammates. So, naturally, the only way to settle the feud was to launch a metal dolly through the bus window. The glass shattered in multiple fighters' faces, including Michael Chiesa and Ray Borg, causing a laceration to Chiesa's face and embedding particles of glass in Borg's eye. That glass, when it broke, turned into almost dust in the thing, and it actually cut the eyeball, you know, the, the cornea and the retina of, of Ray Borg. Both fighters had to be removed from the card due to the injuries. A UFC employee also suffered a broken knuckle during the attack. UFC President Dana White said the incident was the most disgusting thing that's ever happened in the history of the company. This is the most disgusting thing that has ever happened in the history of, of the company. So disgusting that he decided to use the footage in an upcoming promo for Conor McGregor's next fight to help sell tickets. How many times they throw, show Conor sure. throwing that dolly? Oh. Uh, How many times they th show that, even in the promos? I hated when that happened. There was a terrible thing that yeah. Conor did that. God damn, that sold well, some tickets. Know, Connor was arrested later that day and charged with multiple felonies, including three counts of assault and one count of criminal mischief. After spending a minute or two in jail, Connor used the change from his left pocket to make bail. And when the legal dust finally settled, all of Connor's charges were dropped and instead replaced with one count of disorderly conduct. I'm thankful to the DA and the judge for allowing me to move forward. I want to say to my friends, my family, my fans, Thank you for the support. Thank you. Connor. And McGregor's sentence for shattering glass into multiple people's eyes, breaking a UFC employee's knuckle, and destroying a bus window? Five days of community service. Oh, and also a day or two of anger management. They gave him anger management. No felony charges or anything. Conor McGregor's Conor McGregor, and uh, what, what can I tell you? But why was Conor's sentence so light for such a serious offense? Hmm, no idea. The UFC has a zero-tolerance policy on any behavior they deem unacceptable. Former UFC fighter Jason High was banned for life after shoving a referee. Roy Nelson was suspended for nine months for kicking a ref. Paul Daly punched his opponent after the bell and was banned for life. And Jesse Taylor smashed the windows out of a limo and was removed from the Ultimate Fighter finale. You wouldn't want a guy like that representing your company. Oh, or the sport. But in Connor's case, the only punishment handed down by the UFC were some seriously furrowed brows. Um, he's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> In 2017, McGregor was involved in a multi-tiered assault at Bellator 187. But Conor McGregor going after the ref! Conor was attending the event to support his teammate Charlie Ward, who had just won via KO. But before the fight was even officially over, Conor jumped into the ring to celebrate Ward's victory. And look who's in to celebrate with him! The notorious one! Referee Mark Goddard attempted to usher Connor from the ring, but was met with resistance. Connor, angry that he wasn't allowed in the ring during an active fight without even having a cornerman's license, proceeded to push the referee. Wow, Connor McGregor trying to go at the referee. During the scuffle, Connor also managed to cause Ward's KO'd opponent to get knocked back to the floor before doctors could even attend to him. I don't know what's going on here. That is crazy. The chemically amplified McGregor eventually exited the ring, but returned for seconds after he leapt onto the cage railing and delivered a Stockton slap to one of the officials. Afterwards, the commission stated, McGregor's conduct jeopardized the health and safety of fighters and staff. But once the dust settled, Connor received no punishment for the incident. <laughs> 
Fresh off his anger management classes, Connor made headlines yet again after destroying and stealing a fan's phone. The altercation happened outside a Miami hotel and nightclub. Swarms of fans spotted Connor and were taking pictures when McGregor singled out one fan in particular and smacked the phone from his hand, then proceeded to stomp it to pieces. With hotel security holding the victim back, allowing Connor to do as he pleased, McGregor eventually picked up the phone and simply walked away with it. McGregor has never been friends with fans who want to grab a quick selfie with him, as evidenced by this prior incident of snatching out a fan's phone. Police were later called to apprehend Connor, but waited until a reasonable hour as not to disturb McGregor too early in the morning. Police arrived at his home later the next day and patiently waited for Connor to finish his breakfast and finish watching the latest Game of Thrones before politely greeting him. This way, Connor. How you doing, man? Appreciate it, man. Connor eventually agreed to go to the police station after officers promised him it wouldn't take longer than an hour to process him before they released him. I'm sure once he gets in and once he gets in, the process at the station is going to be no less than one hour. Connor was charged with felony strong armed robbery and criminal mischief, but after learning who the defendant was, the prosecutor reduced the charge of strong armed robbery to the lesser offense of robbery by sudden snatching. The victim filed a civil lawsuit for $15,000 over the assault and theft, which was quickly settled behind closed doors. When the criminal trial date finally came, all charges against McGregor were dismissed after the victim stopped cooperating. Charges were dropped against star fighter Conor McGregor, who was accused of smashing a fan's phone outside a Miami Beach hotel. My client is relieved. Um, obviously, he feels he should not have been arrested. Allowing Conor, the Teflon Don McGregor, to walk free yet again. Da 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 da! It's the motherfucking deal, double G! <laughs> Conor McGregor may also be the first person to dethrone John Jones, not in the cage, but in the number of traffic violations. <laughs> McGregor has racked up over a dozen traffic violations due to reckless driving, driving without a license, speeding, and much more. The court heard Conor McGregor has 12 previous convictions for road traffic offenses dating back over 10 years. In 2017, Conor was pulled over for going 95 miles per hour in a 60. After missing his initial court date and failing to pay the fine, he was banned from driving for six months and fined 1,000 euros. Given the substantial amount of previous infractions, the judge said McGregor was lucky his punishment was so light. The judge also told Conor McGregor that he was fortunate not to be facing more serious charges, such as careless or dangerous driving, as eight out of 10 motorists are charged with those offenses. McGregor's lawyer stated that he believed Connor shouldn't be punished at all, as the negative publicity would be punishment enough. His solicitor told the court today that these proceedings would reflect very badly on the mixed martial arts fighter, and the resulting negative publicity would be a punishment in itself. When McGregor finally showed up to court, he stated, I didn't realize I was going that fast, which is really just the real-life equivalent of this excuse. I didn't know I couldn't do that. In 2016, what was supposed to be a simple press conference erupted into a bombardment of dangerous and gross projectiles. Connor, don't throw those out. Connor! Connor! The UFC 202 press conference got heated after an exchange of words between Connor and Nate Diaz. Get the out of here! Get the out of here! After having a water bottle hurled in his general direction from Nate Diaz, McGregor returned fire and indiscriminately launched multiple full cans of monster energy into the crowd. That's all right. Hey, 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 to Connor. Connor, don't throw those out. Connor. Connor. Unfortunately, the cans missed their intended targets and instead hit one of the nearby security guards. Rather than take responsibility for his actions, McGregor opted to blame the security guard for getting hit, stating security should have broken up the incident before it even started. The guard who was hit with the can filed a lawsuit against Connor for $95,000, which included $5,000 worth of medical bills. I'm on probation up to my eyeballs in ongoing and incoming civil cases. McGregor's lawyer called the lawsuit frivolous, but settled out of court for an undisclosed sum. 
Connor was also fined $25,000 and slapped with 25 hours of community service by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Although the commission opted not to suspend McGregor, as he had a fight booked three days after the incident, which the NSAC was being paid to oversee. McGregor also doesn't mind breaking a rule or two, or 20, during his fights, as shown during the Habib Nurmagomedov fight, where he committed a litany of different fouls. But McGregor got away with so many fouls to the point where Khabib was was he left his corner between round three and four to tell the ref, hey, why are you letting him get away with all these things? He should be talking. Uh, first of all, he need the, the worst foul is he need Khabib illegally from the bottom. I think he's getting smashed. McGregor was holding the fence on the last takedown. He's done this time and time again, and when you try to stand up without hand control, he throws you. Another warning from Herb Dean for a fence grab there. Okay, before that, he had held the shorts. I've never seen anybody be able to straighten the leg out like that. The way he hangs, and he almost knee bars you. He was uh, grabbing Khabib's gloves. As long as Connor's controlling your wrist, he's grabbing the glove there. He's got his glove. He's got his glove hey, underneath. Hell? Well, Connor was grabbing his glove, which is illegal. He had put his toes in the fence after being told not to. A knee to the head of a downed opponent. Can't interlock the toes in the fence. McGregor got away with that one. Still doing it. Herb Dean should Khabib be warning him there. Grabbing the fence seems to be McGregor's foul of choice, and he's used it for extra leverage to finish off opponents. He's also grabbed the fence countless other times throughout his career. Mark Goddard furious with the referee, and I think it's something to do with Conor McGregor holding on to the fence. But anyway, back to the action. Conor also fouled Floyd Mayweather over 14 times, with every trick in the book during his boxing debut, including a low blow. Same. Low blow. Over a dozen punches to the back of the head. I wasn't expecting Floyd to do just a burst. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's illegal. That's his powered shot. You cannot do that. That is illegal. That was an illegal shot. You can't hit him there. That you can't hit him on the back of the head. Both shots landed there. That, that is not a legal shot. He's hit on the back of the head. You cannot do that. No rabbit punch. No rabbit punch. He's done a lot of subtle things in there. And even faked an apologetic glove touch only to deliver a sucker punch instead. Whoa. McGregor has also come under fire several times for his multitude of insensitive comments towards other fighters' religions and ethnicities. The most recent example was a quickly deleted tweet Connor sent to Habib Nurmagomedov, where he posted an image of Habib and his wife's wedding. In the tweet, he referred to Habib's wife as a towel due to the traditional Islamic garb she was wearing. McGregor also followed up by tweeting, Plot twist, it's a goat under that towel. Connor also tried to offer Habib, who doesn't drink due to his religion, alcohol. I'm gonna go like my last fight. Happy birthday like, in the bush. I, I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I don't drink. Why don't you drink? I never drink. After Habib refuses, Connor then refers to his beliefs as backwards. I never drink. You're mad backwards. But Habib wasn't the only one on the receiving end of McGregor's vitriolic comments. Connor has also referred to Latino fighter Nate Diaz as a cholo gangster and a crackhead essay. He's like a he's like a little cholo gangster from the hood. The crackhead SS. Connor has also called Dennis Seaver a Nazi just because he's German and made multiple insensitive comments to Floyd Mayweather and his team. Juicehead monkey! Juicehead monkey! I just didn't like when he called us monkeys. The most Connor could muster for an apology was a tweet saying he was sorry. Dance for me, boy! Years before Connor made it big in the UFC, he was busy tarnishing his reputation before he even had one. His coach, John Cavanaugh, would host local MMA events and enlist the help of fighters from his gym to help sell tickets. In exchange for selling the tickets, they could keep a small commission of the sales. Connor was able to use his vibrant and charismatic charm to offload over 500 euros worth of tickets, but instead of taking his commission, decided to just keep all the cash for himself and left Cavanaugh's gym. According to his book, Kavanaugh stated, That little shit who took my money and ran away stole roughly 500 euros from his longtime coach. 
The book also stated that Connor would rarely even pay his gym fees. After Connor's mother called Kavanaugh, imploring him to let Connor back into the gym, Kavanaugh agreed and even let Connor keep the money, stating, if I didn't wipe the slate clean, he was never going to come back. Before the UFC 229 press conference, Dana White announced that the event would be closed to the public, with only select journalists and UFC staff to be permitted to attend the event. But Connor announced via his Twitter that fans who showed up to the event with a purchased bottle of Proper 12, McGregor's own brand of whiskey, would be allowed into the venue to attend the press conference. Connor even promised that if you purchased two bottles, you could skip straight to the front of the line. When the day of the press conference finally arrived, fans showed up at the doors of Radio City Music Hall with their bottles of Proper 12 in hand. Unfortunately for them, entry was promptly denied by security. Son, I'd like you to step away from this vector and get into a different coordinate pronto. There's no access for you in this quadrant. Leaving the fans out in the cold. But hey, at least they had a bottle of delicious high-end whiskey to keep them warm, right? And it's, it's not got a lot going for it, no. I don't want to say that this is a fantastic whiskey, because frankly it's not. But pretty, not a lot going on there, honestly. I had a lot worse. <laughs> oh, cheers. Connor didn't apologize for standing the fans up, but did issue an official apology for selling too many bottles of whiskey. Where's the fans at? That's who we fight for. That's who pays the bills. That's who deserves this show. McGregor also doesn't mind using his fans as a negotiation tactic when it comes time to sign a new contract. Connor has announced his retirement multiple times, disappointing his fans and leading them to believe they will never see him compete again. Connor's first retirement was announced in 2016 when he tweeted, I have decided to retire young. Thanks for the cheese. Catch you later. Then, as soon as he finalized his new contract, he was back in the octagon just four months later, making it one of the shortest retirements in history. McGregor pulled this trick again in March of 2019, announcing his retirement from MMA, then only a day or two later announced he plans to be back in the cage by July. What's next? We're, we, I'm waiting. We're waiting yeah. for you. Well, my next fight, we're in talks for July. Uh, we're in talks for July, so we'll see what happens. A lot of politics and going on. The fight game is a, is a mad game. McGregor also has several criminal and civil investigations currently underway, including an incident where a man claimed McGregor punched him in an Irish pub, as well as a sexual assault case that's been ongoing since December of 2018, neither of which have been proven in court as of yet. While McGregor has solidified himself as one of the most polarizing figures in MMA history, he's also become one of the most controversial. Smash the windows! Connor is still riding on his massive waves of success, but leaving a line of innocent victims in his wake. Many celebrities and athletes have taken the same path. Some made it through the adversity, and some didn't. Though it's still unclear where Connor's path will lead, we can be certain of one thing the world will be watching. Do you like breaking the rules? <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean, I, I, I am the rule. Me to the street, I walk. Anyone gonna stop me? Anyone gonna stop me? Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe.